So this is a very important problem, match filter. So the, uh, this, is, this comes under receiver design. So let, let me re let's review the problem. A signal and noise are coming in. So what you, uh, what you see is, uh, so the signal might be in a, a good. So this might be a signal. So signal is de a deterministic signal and it is contaminated by noise. That's the input signal. A known signal is contaminated. And uh, so, so what comes in here may look like this. And, and we want to do a processing to it to determine at the output, you just want to know uh, yes or no. So you may want to do something like, so yes means the question is, this one, is this signal plus noise or is this just noise? Looking at it, you can say, right? We have to do some processing. Now, some of you may be asking, if the signal is known, why bother? Why don't you grab the signal from here? But uh, in communication also look like this, maybe this is representing bit one. And let's say the flipped version, which is BPSK is representing minus one. So you don't know what is going, what is coming in. It could be this plus noise or another signal, which is minus of that or no signal plus noise. So this may represent uh, the zero bit. So you have to do some processing on the data that you receive to figure out uh, what is, yes means plus one, one bit, this is zero bit. Or in radar, right? You transmit this signal. If there is an object there, then the signal will come back at you. And of course, you are you, what you are seeing is this. Then you are asking, is this signal plus noise or this is just noise? You have to do some processing to it. So what is our problem? We want to design a receiver which looking at this will decide for you what is the a truth. Uh, so by this I mean generally we, have, we are patient enough to wait till all the processing is done and at some point you are going you want to make a decision at t equal to t naught. So you may say what is t naught? For example look at this, this pulse duration may be t, then you can say that at least I should wait till the I, call, I process through the whole pulse, right? So this t naught you may want it to be equal to t or maybe a little more than t and this is perfectly clear in communication because one bit after the other bit is coming so you process and make the decision after every bit duration so this t naught will be most likely equal to t but we will leave it as general so whatever you do at the end we close the gate and you make a decision right then you start the new problem so how do you go about this? So if you look at here, remember this is a linear system. So once again, there are two components. There is a signal part and there is a noise part. The noise comes through and you get a new noise. And the signal comes through, you have a signal part. So you could say, remember, we want to get a hand on how to design this. So in electrical engineering, at least, the signal to noise power ratio is used uh, to do a lot of stuff. So you can say, I want the signal to be as high as possible and I want the noise to be as low as possible. So one way to look at that would be, look at the signal to noise ratio at the output. This stands for signal to noise ratio, right? This is for output. There is a signal to noise ratio here. <coughs> so what will be the input signal to noise ratio, anybody? So that's the signal power. So let's say st squared. What will be the noise power? Anybody? Now that you have learned a little bit, how will you characterize the noise power? So, hello. For the for to speak about power, you need some. You, you have seen this. Now you need some white sum station IT. Okay. So, according to this expression, what would you put at the denominator? Noise power. Huh? I mean, or uh, remember, zero to t has no meaning here. This is a stochastic process. 
which goes from minus infinity to plus infinity being voids and stationary. So look at this. This is average noise power, right? Expected value of nt squared. And if you want to write it in terms of autocorrelation, what this will be? Anybody? Rnn. Very good. And you can write it in terms of its power spectrum. If you want to write, this will be? Hmm? Remember, we just went through this. The area under the power spectrum is the total power, and that's Rn and 0, so that's the expression here. But we want to look at the, so, <laughs> a denominator is clear. What, what should I put in here? I want the average no output noise, so look at the output noise symbol. Hello? Huh? So what will be the quantity here? This noise goes through the system to generate W of t. So what will be the average output noise? Anybody? Anybody is listening here? I'm saying, what is the, <laughs> remember, I want signal power to noise power. I'll come to the signal in a minute. I'm dealing with the output. So what is the output to noise power? Expected value of? So I just went through this, so you didn't pay any attention here. How do you compute the input noise power? Input signal energy, this is ES, divided by Average output noise power. Why average? Because this doesn't make any sense. This is a stochastic process. So I can't just write like this. I cannot write what heat said either. Zero to T. What happens to the other noise? Noise is everywhere. So this is the quantity that makes sense, right? RMS value. No, 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 that's output, not output. This is input, right? Let me just finish. Uh, he asked me, hello. So this is the input noise power, average input noise power. You can write it in terms of its autocorrelation or say a spectrum. That's irrelevant, right? So this is by Rnn0. So if, you, if I want to do the similar quantity at the output, what would be that at uh, the denominator? Know, Expected value of Wt squared at least. So that's the output noise, right? Or if it is complex, you can write it like this. And how about here? So that's the, no? Yeah? <laughs> right, so the couple of ways you can do it. What turns out to be useful is you take the instantaneous value of the signal. So remember, so the logic is like this. You're only going to make the decision at t equal to t naught. So I think I want, what I want to do is I want to do some receiver design so that at t equal to t naught, the receiver should be such that it should peak the, this is, my s hat of t should look like this. Because this is when I make the decision, right? This is like saying when you take the photo, you want to look good, right? So similarly, at t equal to t naught, if the decision is being made, you only you want to make the signal peak at that time, and the noise is going to be you suppress it as much as possible. You cannot do anything to the noise here because you can only get a grip on the noise in an average sense. So we took care of the noise. <coughs> so for the output, we are going to do this. This is not <coughs> what you said or what you were trying to say. We could have done something similar here also at the output. Logical thing, hello, would be integral 0 to t, s hat of t dt, squared dt. But then you can see, you are making an average quantity. Why should I try to maximize here when I am not looking there, right? See, the decision is only being made here. So this is the, I think, the philosophy of the Greeks. Do only the bare minimum, do the problem in front of you, not try to, we don't need to maximize here. We are looking here, so that time the signal should look as high as possible. <coughs> See, now we can use uh, what we learned in the little earlier. 
So this quantity is what? R? R W W. Why? <coughs> zero, isn't it? Why N and zero? You keep saying. It doesn't matter. This is R W W zero. I agree. W T is of course N of T convolved with H of T. <coughs> so R W W tau will be what? Anybody? We just went through this. A stochastic process going through a linear system generates a stochastic process. So the output autocorrelation is? And the output spectrum is? Input spectrum? Into H square. omega squared, right? So, how will you get R W W zero? Anybody? Or more example, let me write down the S hat of T naught is what? S. So, S hat of T is what? S of S T convolved with H of T, right? Look at here. Output signal is input signal convolved with S of T. This is not a stochastic signal. This is a deterministic pulse, most likely. So what is S hat of omega? Anyone? Here, if you convolve two signals, what is the Fourier transform? So this will be S omega multiplied by H omega. So S hat of T will be what? Inverse Fourier transform of this quantity. Hello? Yes? So that's going to be what? Minus infinity plus infinity. S hat of omega, which will be? S omega, H omega, E raised to, right? So this is the expression I'm going to put it here. So this is S omega, H omega, E raised to right? So squared divided by here. How will you compute uh, R W W zero from here? Anybody? So what is the relation between these two? What is the relation between these two? All right. So this is the four inverse Fourier transform of this. We went through this. So area under the power spectrum is what equal to. For any process, area under the power spectrum is autocorrelation evaluated at zero, right? Because look at here, R, R W W tau is inverse Fourier transform of S W W omega, right? Put tau equal to zero, so you get one over two pi S W W omega d omega is R W W zero, right? But look here, somewhere else. Yeah, so let me substitute for S W W into this expression. So this is one over two pi minus infinity to plus infinity S N N omega H omega squared D omega. So which is what I'm going to substitute here, okay? Any, any problems so far? Everything is clear? Hello? Now I'm going to, we'll do two cases. Let me make the assumption that N of T is white noise. So N of T is white noise, so what is uh, SN and omega? Anybody? SN and omega will be what? And I am saying S, N of T is white noise, so what will be Sn and omega? Sn and omega will look like this, right? That's what I mean by white noise. So let me say this level is sigma squared. 
So this is a constant, right? Remember, by definition, white noise means it's flat. It's not frequency sensitive. So let me call, so sigma squared goes outside. So notice that <coughs> uh, this expression now becomes 1 over 2 pi sigma squared. And you have two integrals. On the numerator, you have s omega e raised to j omega t naught multiplied by h omega d omega. And the denominator, you have This is true. I just put this term together here. And I pulled out this constant outside. So that constant is here. <coughs> 1 over 2 pi comes twice. So it cancels with this. So you have this. Now, anybody has heard about Schwartz inequality? Anybody? What is it? No one? No one in this class? In fact, I think we did this in, in relation to show that variance or something is positive. Or autocorrelation. So look at this. Uh, this will, if you integrate this quantity, it doesn't matter what is A and B. What will you get? No, no, no. We'll explain in a second. But first of all. Some positive, so this will be true, right? Yes. So the, this side you can write it as what? So let's say so we'll make it simple. Right? Yes. So what is here? Are you here? Okay. So if I draw this as a function of C, how will it look like? It has to look like this, right? But this is a quadratic in C. The same thing we did this. So the quadratic has two roots. So what happened to the roots? I don't see any roots here. Remember, these are the coefficients, right? This is like a x squared plus b x plus c is here, right? Yeah, the determinant is, so this is the quantity I'm plotting. So the two roots are imaginary, right? So that means the discriminant is negative. This is your b, right? So b squared minus 4ac is negative. b is what? 2 multiplied by this, right? Yes. So remember, this is a x squared plus b x plus c. So b squared minus 4ac is negative. Uh, so, for example, this is your A, this is your C. So, your B is uh, 2 multiplied by A omega, B omega, D omega squared <laughs> is less than 4AC. So, A is A squared omega, C is B squared omega. 4 cancels. So, that this is Schwartz inequality. So this quantity is less than or equal to a squared omega d omega and b squared omega d. Okay? I mean, you hear through one ear and you lose it through the other one. We did this about a few weeks back in another context. So this is the cross correlation function is less than a squared. So this is the energy of the first signal, this is the energy of the second signal. 
you could do this in time domain it's the same thing at bt dt squared is less than a squared t dt that will be the energy of a of t b squared t dt so here you will get this one we don't need it now but this is also true all right look here so this is my a function uh, this is my b function so i'm going to do one more Oh, it's a star could be here, it doesn't matter. So let me I try to, So this is my <coughs> B function. <coughs> to make it with a star, look at here. I'm you're going to use a couple of ways you can do this. I I'll do the star to what is A star star? Anybody? A is back. So I can star this, this is star, then I can put a star here. That's the same thing, right? And call a of omega to be what you see inside with this star. Okay. So look at the numerator. Uh, the, so uh, hold on. Uh, I forgot to. The, there is a square here, right? So there is a square here. So look here, this squared is exactly the same thing. A, a, so integral a star b omega squared is less than a squared b squared. So this quantity is less than or equal to the constant. The numerator is going to be what? Anybody? So the numerator is the first of the quantity squared, that's s omega e raised to j omega t naught squared d omega then you have h omega squared uh, d omega and here you have h omega squared uh, d omega with an integral sign look here this cancels with this So this now leads to 1 over 2 pi sigma squared integral s omega squared d omega. So 1 over 2 pi I am going to write it here and sigma squared I will put it here. What is this quantity on the numerator? Anybody? That's it. This is Parseval's theorem. This is the energy of the signal in the frequency domain. This is the energy in the time domain divided by sigma squared. So that's Es by sigma squared. But look what it says. The maximum value, look, we want to maximize this. Here is the punchline. We want to maximize this quantity. Look at here. This quantity is less than or equal to this quantity. This is the input signal to noise ratio. So what is the maximum value that the output signal to noise ratio can take? What is the maximum value? Equal to this. So I can call this quantity to be SNR output maximum, right? <coughs> Maybe I forgot to tell another thing here. So the question is when will you have equality here? And you, you can see when one function is proportional to the other, <laughs> when b omega is uh, k times a omega, that's when you have equality. If you want equality, you put uh, one function need to be proportional to the other one. Same thing here. Okay. So, of course, we want, <coughs> remember, we want to maximize this quantity equal to here. So, we want equality here. If you want equality, one function, this function need to be proportional to the <coughs> other one. <coughs> uh, so, <coughs> or I'll do it here. So we could say SNR output is maximized. <coughs> if and only if H omega is what? So what will be the equality condition? Uh, B omega should be A omega. 
So what is A omega? Look here. What is the condition here? This function should be proportional to this function, right? This function and this function should be proportional. So this is the role of B, this is the role of A. A is the inside quantity. So take the proportionality constant to be 1. You can take anything you like. So that should be a star omega. Is it a minus? Right. So <coughs> how do you translate this into time domain? Anybody? You look through the tables. We did this earlier. This will turn out to be. Remember what was the transform of S star omega? It was S star of minus t, isn't it? So this will be n plus this. So <laughs> easiest way is you start with this function, show that its Fourier transform is this, or use the properties. You, let's find the, quickly the Fourier transform of the right side. So that's minus infinity to plus infinity, S star t naught minus t. Right? So let me call this a new variable tau. So this is my minus limits are still the same. S star of tau e raised to minus j omega. So tau is t naught minus t. So t is going to be t naught minus tau. So this is t naught minus tau. dt will be, you can see, minus d tau. And the limits, I made a mistake because when t is minus infinity, tau will be plus infinity. So this will be plus, this will be minus. But because of this minus, this will flip again. So you will have minus infinity to plus infinity. I'm going to take the tau outside, star outside. So you have e raised to minus j omega naught tau d tau star e raised to minus j omega t. But this is the Fourier transform of S of omega. So the inverse Fourier transform of this is, look at here. So the Fourier transform of this is this, which is what, so Fourier transform of this is this. So we solved this problem. We were looking for the best receiver. So the best receiver, as you can see, has some connection to the signal that you are looking for. That's why this is called matched filter. So filter is matched to the input signal. So how does this look? So you say if S of t is like this, First you flip it, you can say you need S of minus t, so S of minus t is going to look like what? Flip to version, how will it look like, anyone? It will be difficult to, uh, right? Flip to version. Then you shift it by t naught. Let's say whatever reason you decide to take your, your, so you shift it by that amount. So this point is going to, this point is going to shift like this, right? So this will be your h of t, which is you shifted this signal by t naught. That's what you want. Where? Here. You so flip it and shift it by T naught. So I'll do a few examples here. So if the original signal is like this, this is your S of T, then S of minus T is of course like this, right? And here, let me do two cases. So my T naught is T by two. So then this will look like this, right? So this will be your h of t because s of h of t is s of t naught minus t. So this is a non-causal receiver, but if your case b, if t naught is t, 
then of course, uh, you know, in this case, it looks like the same. H of t is S of uh, t minus t, right? Any questions? And uh, of course, if you use this filter, what will be the maximum signal to noise ratio? Then look, you can make this quantity equal to the maximum. This is the maximum value because it says the signal to noise ratio is going to be less than or equal to this quantity. So you can make the output signal to noise ratio equal to this quantity. <laughs> Happens to be the input uh, signal to noise ratio. So. Uh, where you uh, now remember somewhere here in this process we assume that the noise is white white noise so what if the noise is not white noise so then <coughs> Conceptually, suppose you can do this. If you can design a filter which will do this job, so you have uh, you have ST plus NT, but NT is colored noise. So I'm going to design a filter, but my main goal is to keep uh, make the noise white noise. Anyway, if I pass it through, if, if, I, if I pass the signal through uh, GFT, what will be the output? Anybody? <coughs> what will happen to the signal? If I pass the signal through a linear filter, what will be the output? All right, so yes, G of T will be S of T convolved with G of T, right? Right? And let's say this has got a transform G of omega. And I'm going to uh, design a first a filter so that this is like saying you convert the problem to something familiar. If a signal plus white noise, you know how to solve the problem, right? What would be the best filter to use here? Anyone? What is the, if I have a signal plus no, white noise coming in, what is the best filter to maximize the signal to noise ratio? Match filter. To what? So what will be the filter? H of T will be what? It's written there, right? A star of? A star of what? S. What is S there? S. Whatever is the input here, not this S. Remember, I'm trying to show you how to solve this problem. So conceptually, let's say we can design a filter which will transfer the, so I'm only concentrating on the noise here. See, one difficulty at a time. We convert the colored noise into white noise. Of course, unfortunately, the signal will get transformed. So S will become SG, but I know the best filter is SG. <coughs> so if you're going to make the decision at T0, I have a match filter, and this is called whitening filter. Actually, this is pretty easy, because let me make this notation as before. This is W of T. So what is SWW omega? Anyone? We have whitened the noise, so what will be the power spectrum of the noise? What is the... Oh? Constant, right? So let's say it is 1. Whereas this has got some shape. This is S, N, N, omega. Some colored noise shape. This is not white. That's what we mean by colored. In between stands the filter G of omega. So what is the relation between this power spectrum and this power spectrum? Anyone? This is also equal to what? So you see, you get this relation, you see, you see this? 
Remember, this is the unknown, this is given. So you can use this relation to, uh, to design this filter. So at least uh, symbolically I can write g omega squared is what? Equal to 1 over the input noise spectrum. Okay. Remember, this is given to you. So, it's another, so the next uh, important thing will be, how do I find a filter which is useful? So you want a filter to be stable, realizable, etc. So that this filters, if I give you a power spectrum, how do I find a filter which will satisfy this? For the time being, let's assume that that's called the whitening filter. Okay. So this will be a topic by itself. So if you can find out the whitening filter, that will be the filter you use. Then of course the problem becomes a new signal plus white noise. But a signal in white noise, the best filter is match filter. So you know the problem to the a solution to the general problem. You need a two, <coughs> you need a two filters. So the general the cascade of this is always true. First you convert the noise into white noise. And then you get a new signal. So you use the match filter. So whitening filter followed by match filter is the optimum filter. Right? Remember, if the noise is colored, you first filter's job is to convert it into white noise. That means this filter should, uh, whatever, is, however you find this filter, its uh, square of the transfer function should be 1 over Sn and omega. How do you do that? That's a different issue. It's not going to be the square root of this. It's not that easy. So that's a filter design problem, given the spectrum. That'll be a different course. But we can, we can look at, uh, I can give you, at least in simple cases, I can give you, maybe we'll discuss this next time. But <laughs> once you do that, then this, of course, this mistake you usually made, this is not the problem. This is not S of T here. This will be a new signal. So even if this is a pulse, <laughs> if this has got some shape, then this convolved with this, this SG is going to be maybe a more complicated pulse and this will going to in, introduce symbol interference and so on. But in any case, it will be a new signal and this filter will may be matched to this signal. So I have done everything in the continuous time case. Exactly the same ideas goes through in the discrete case also. <coughs> so of course, the a discrete case, here you will have a discrete time signal. So the best filter will be S star of whenever you make the decision minus N. This will be the match filter. <coughs> and uh, of course, you need to find out the whitening filter. So the whole point is whitening followed by match filter uh, is the optimum receiver design. Of course, if the noise is white, and then you don't have to worry about this whitening part. You just to deal with the match filter part, right? So the match filter, of course, the match filter matched to what? Whatever is coming in, the input signal, okay? Any questions here with our examples? <coughs> 